Hello, this is Daryl Castle with today's Castle Report. Today is Friday, the seventh day of May, and that's the year of our Lord, 2021. Today I will be looking at the question of whether we are approaching peak woke or not. Could the pendulum be swinging back the other direction or said another way, could this be as bad as it gets? Or will we continue down the same road to our ultimate cultural and national destruction? This is Mother's Day weekend. In the Castle family, I celebrate my wife, Joan, who is the mother of the family daughter. Both Joan and I lost our mothers many years ago, so we celebrate Joan and the family daughter whose husband returns from over a year's exile at the bottom of the world due to the virus. So a glorious weekend of celebration for the Castle family. What do I mean by the word woke? A good example of woke for Mother's Day is that the woke term for mother is birthing persons. Next year, we celebrate birthing persons day, folks. That's right. I wish I were kidding, but I'm not. I'm afraid I'm not. Woke is an ideology of race and identity which holds basically that American white people are all racist because it is embedded in their DNA. Often, they may not even be aware of it, but that racism is the reason for the lack of success of non-white people when and if there is a lack of success. I defer to Paul Craig Roberts, quote, the Democrats, the media, the woke intellectuals, the universities, and the public schools are hard at work preparing our doom. The United States are now the disunited states. The blue states believe in white guilt, critical race theory, systemic racism, identity politics, and that all products of Western civilization, even mathematics, are symbols and devices of white supremacy. The red states do not have an understanding of the ideological assault that has been mounted against them. End quote. Dr. Roberts has given us a very good definition of the problem that the word woke and its proponents present to us. My theory today is that we may have turned the corner, or at least... At the edge of the corner, I want to give you a couple of examples of how things were in a different time and how they have changed today. I recently read an article from a faculty member of one of our founder universities. In fact, it was the Ivy League University of Cornell. This professor said it was common for university faculty to live in fear that they would say something that offended one of their students. When I was in college, Later in graduate school in the mid-70s, debate was encouraged, not feared. The graduate classes were small. Students worked in classes of seven or eight students with the professor sometimes, an even smaller number. There was no punishment for disagreeing with and debating a professor. The professor did not get fired if he challenged our beliefs. The idea was to challenge us intellectually in order that we might Consider other views and ideas and thereby grow. I can remember one incident in a political science class that was more philosophy than politics. The professor announced that he was a socialist. Today that would be normal and expected, but back then, in East Tennessee, it was shocking. He told us that socialism was the best way, the only fair system. There we were, sitting right in front of a real socialist. Since debate was encouraged, I said to him that since socialism was the best system, he could probably give us eight or ten places where it had been tried successfully around the world. No, well then, Professor, how about two or three places? Just give us two or three places where it's been successfully tried. Okay, then. All right, just one. Give us one. Just one example of how it was tried successfully and where it made the lives of ordinary people better. Well, he said, the people who have tried it just didn't do it correctly or else the CIA interfered and ruined their efforts. The point is that debate between professor and students was seen as a teaching method, a good thing rather than something to get a professor fired or a student banned from class. Many people are starting to rebel just a little bit against the domineering efforts of our woke leaders. Here in my state of Tennessee, the House just passed a bill banning the teaching of critical race theory in the public schools. The bill doesn't mention critical race theory directly, but it bans the key elements of that theory from being taught. The governor of Florida, Ron DeSantis, lifted the state's remaining COVID restrictions, freeing the Florida economy. 
and the day-to-day -day activities of Florida citizens from government regulations that shut down most economies. Governor DeSantis has become a national spokesperson among conservatives who have seen the results of his policies. I remember a headline from the New York Post a couple of weeks ago, quote, New York is alive and doing well in Palm Beach, Florida, end quote. People in New York grew tired of their governor, Andrew Cuomo, and they voted with their feet and their money. Governor Cuomo does not seem to grasp his own culpability in the nursing home deaths or the many accusations of sexual harassment, sexual assault against him, but he has heard the bankrupt business owners and the fleeing citizens. He scheduled the 19th of May for the state to begin reopening with Broadway at full capacity by September 14th. Here in Tennessee, the governor has lifted the authority of mayors to order lockdowns and mask mandates and ordered the state to begin complete reopening May 15th, the Commercial Appeal, the Memphis Commercial Appeal, our very woke newspaper editorialized that the governor should not apply here in West Tennessee, but so far so good. The legislature's in certain red states since both overreach and weakness from the Biden-Harris administration and are moving to get out in front of his wave of executive orders and regulations. Georgia is not the only state to put voter ID in place now, many other states have joined Georgia. Kansas would be a good example. A very simple principle of voter ID. It makes logical sense to most people that if you need an ID to buy a drink or fly on an airplane, it is not egregious to require one for voting. The New York Times and the Washington Post do not see it that way, of course. They still call voter ID a restriction on voting. The Arizona legislature is currently conducting an audit of the 2020 election with many states to follow. The victors seem alarmed at this challenge of an election audit, but it has been commonplace in the past. More than a dozen states currently have nullified federal gun laws, or they are in the process of doing so. Those states are telling the federal government they will not allow the overturning of the Constitution by executive order in their state. Time will tell what the response of the federal officials will be to all this resistance, but the point is that resistance exists and it is growing. Where elections have been held, people voted overwhelmingly to end woke socialist experiments in their communities, even in Austin, Texas. The Berkeley of Texas, the measures were resoundingly defeated, teaching of critical race theory was defeated 70% to 30%. In South Lake, Texas, the school officials referred to it as the school diversity plan. But voters saw it for what it really was. South Lake is an affluent suburb 30 miles from Dallas. Voters from both sides referred to the vote as a fork in the road or a watershed moment for the divisions in Texas. In Austin on May 1st, voters overruled the mayor and city council and approved Proposition B, which reinstates a public camping ban that was reversed by the council in 2019. The vote, 57 to 43 percent, the lifting of the public camping ban resulted in homeless people camping in public parks on sidewalks in downtown areas. If you want to see the results of such policies, just visit L.A. or San Francisco. The people of Austin decided that their city could still be saved from violent crime, public drug abuse, public defecation that have plagued California cities. They revoked the permission to do those things legally. A group sponsoring the remaining reinstating of the camping ban was called Save Austin Now. That group refused to give up until they managed to get the matter on the ballot. So some dedicated people still do care about their communities. Texas seems to be a hot spot as a result of the impact woke Democrat policies have had on that state. A dozen counties in Texas have declared states of emergency because of the worsening of the border crisis. Arizona has similar conditions. The governor has taken similar actions. The border states are under invasion from foreign nationals, from who knows what countries, all invited by the Biden administration. People are becoming alarmed with what can the states do to protect them. The governors are the commanders of the state national guards. They do not need federal permission to send the guard to the border. 
The real questions involve the rules of engagement for the Guard and anyone else defending the border. If I were an officer in the Guard, I would want a written order including the rules of engagement for my unit. If the rules do not permit lethal force, then sending the Guard is a meaningless gesture. The states could also form state militias as permitted by the Constitution to defend their borders since the federal authorities will do nothing to defend them, but then the same rules of engagement problem exists. The administration has started to experience a little pushback on things that obviously do not make logical sense. For example, to tell people there is no crisis at the border is too ridiculous even for Democrat politicians to accept. Even they've started demanding answers. Unfortunately, there is apparently no one in this administration with enough intelligence to even make up a believable lie about what they are doing, that leaves them in the role of Baghdad Bob, who famously responded to the American tanks by saying on American TV, you are not seeing this. There is a feeling in the air that the virus and its problems are over, done with. I see it each day on the faces of people. In the gym I go to, people as they pass through my office were still required to wear masks to enter, enter any place of business here in Memphis, Tennessee, but that is supposed to be lifted a week from tomorrow. Will the virus be any less contagious a week from tomorrow than now? When I raised questions about the virus and the response to it, no one can answer, or at least no one will answer, because the answers do not make any logical sense. In conclusion, we're a nation with a history of freedom, folks, where people are free to think whatever they want to think, but suddenly... That concept is doubted. Virtually all the people I talk to say they want it that way, but in some areas of the country, many people believe that those who do not think as they do should be held accountable for that. That means you comply or you will not work. You will be banished from the public eye. Perhaps that is why people are fleeing from those areas in droves. Some people seem too distracted to even notice. Finally, folks, are we at peak woke? Certainly not everywhere, because the vision of the Biden administration, however sinister, plays well in the highly populated cities of the coast. But just step one foot into red state America, you will see what people are starting to figure out. It's probably we reached its peak with them, folks. At least that's the way I see it. Until next time, this is Daryl Castle. Thanks for listening.